Yes, it's me. It's me. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man face to face. I have a burning question. It's uh, we can call it a midweek or whatever you want to call it. But I've got something that's burning on the inside. And um, I, I just want to talk for a few minutes about something. And my question is this. When Jesus speaks, is God always speaking? When Jesus speaks, is God always speaking? Is God always talking? Because Jesus opens his mouth and Jesus starts to speak. I raise this theological dilemma because I, I want to address something that uh, the body of Christ is experiencing today. And that is, is that they feel as if God has not shown up on their behalf the way that they feel that he should have shown up. And so therefore we are experiencing a falling away. We, we are experiencing those that are losing their, um, their appeal, their zest, their fervor for Christendom and to continue and to continue faithfully and to continue strong to continue to race. We, we, we're, we're fading. We're fading. And, and I'm bothered by that today. And, and I want to address that to some degree. So my, my question is because, um, if you don't understand this, you're going to continue to drift. And, and I want to present this picture of Jesus before you. So perhaps it can resonate on the inside of you and maybe you can turn it around. It's possible. I'm just a preacher preaching foolishness here. We, we never know what God is going to do. So my question is this. When Jesus speaks again, is God always speaking? Now, I've given you a little time to think about that because I know most of y'all, you know, with with your theological uh, seminary uh, background, you're going to say, well, of course. Yes, Jesus is speaking. Jesus is God. Uh huh. Jesus was speaking. Well, I don't not so fast. Cook, pump, pump your brakes, cool your jets. OK, because I'm trying to bring this to you from a different perspective because I want you to understand you better. It's something that I had to learn. OK, so uh, I'm, I've come to a place now to where I can kind of help people a little bit. And so when I think about things, I think about myself and I say, well, you know, how did I deal with this? And it, it took me longer to maybe get out of it because I had to be the one to present it and teach it. So I want to give it to you and maybe you can come out of it a lot quicker than I did. So I want to show you something. Jesus is on the cross and Jesus says this, just as Jesus talking, Jesus says, why has thou forsaken me? Now, Jesus is talking to God and my question to you, because this is where a lot of us are at. When Jesus said, why is there forsaken me? It's like you saying, man, I can't believe you. You left me hanging like this. I can't believe you didn't come here for me like this. I can't believe you're going to leave me without a job. I can't believe you took my mom, my dad. I can't believe that, you know, you allowed the sickness to come up on me. I, I can't. Why has thou forsaken me? Jesus is talking to God. I want to ask you, was 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 God talking when Jesus spoke? Jesus speaking, who is talking now? Because we said that you can't separate the two. It God. It was God incarnate when when Jesus came. It was God. But my question to you, my burning question, 
is when Jesus speak, is God always talking? Now, so he says, why hast thou forsaken me on one hand? On the other hand, he comes right back and he says, hmm, let me think about this for a minute. Let me think about this. Because in, in, the, same, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the same moment, he's asking God to take this cup. This is Jesus talking. Take this cup from me. I don't want to go through this kind of stuff. This is too much. I know you didn't call me here. I know you didn't allow all these things to, to happen upon me. I know you didn't want me to be broke like this. I know you didn't want me begging. I know you didn't want me to ignorant. I know you didn't want me without no education and, and all this. I, I, I know you didn't. Take this from me. Take it. Take it. And then... He says, wait a minute, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Now, I, my question was, is God always talking when Jesus speaks? And there was another place. There was another place. So I just want to kind of show you something because I, I, I think we getting some stuff crisscrossed. And this is affecting how we are as a body able to navigate and to navigate successfully with power, with strength and with authority. And, and I think it has a lot to do with our thinking, our intellect, our, our spiritual intelligence, our posture, our integrity, our character in God. But, but Christ Jesus was preeminent. He was the first one. He said, listen, he says, I'm going to show you how to navigate through this. And, and he did the same thing that we did. But on one hand, Jesus, the man talks. And on the other hand, Jesus, the God talks. And so we go through changes and we say, well, God ain't, Jesus ain't never experienced this before. But the Bible says that we have not a high priest that has not been touched by the feelings of our infirmities and yet was without sin. No sin touched him, came upon him. He exhibited no sin, none, but he was touched by everything. Why am I saying it? I'm saying it because you, you believe that Christ, he, you know, I was raped. Uh, I was mishandled. Uh, I've been on drugs. I've been this. The reason why you feel that Christ can't identify with you is because you don't have a revelation. You have not went deep enough in Christ, in his word for, for it to be revealed to you. That's why I'm here. That's why God brought me here. And so what I'm saying to you is, yes, Yes, because before that, you didn't even realize that when Jesus is talking, that don't necessarily mean God is talking. So what I'm saying to you is when you talking out the side of your neck, a lot of times be careful because that don't necessarily mean that God is talking. And you're saying that you represent God because you don't know if your children are hearing. You don't know if your children are, are around. You don't know if there's people that are around you that God wants to bring into the fold, the body of Christ. And you have lifted up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. And you're saying that I am a Christian, but you don't exhibit the character and the strength, the tenacity of a Christian. And so what is that all about? So I, I, I just I just wanted you to ponder that question for this midweek. And I wanted it to challenge you because it's so many of y'all, including myself, I'm not no I'm not any better, that we can't do the things that God wants us to do because we're murmuring like the children of Israel. We're complaining and we're saying, woe is me. And God, why you do me like that? You didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to lead me this way. That's cold blooded. So many of us. And I and I was in the spirit today. I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body. And I'm sitting and I'm just seeing people just going about their way and not giving deference, no mind whatsoever to God. Just like psst, bump it. And you don't even realize it. You have just given up on God and you don't even realize that you've given up on God. How do I know that you've given up on God? Because when you got up this morning, you made up your mind. You determined within yourself, I'm going to do my own thing. 
and you put your your party shoes on, your party mentality, you'll do it your way. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's me. I'm walking this. Ain't nobody doing, ain't nobody helping me. All that, that pity party thing as Jesus did on the cross. When he said, take, can you, can you take this away from me? This is too much. The things that Jesus was saying as the man versus the things after he came out of the flesh, as he was saying, as the God, we got to move from the flesh to God. Paul says it in Romans this way. He says, you know what? That that I would do, I do not. And that that I do not, I, I do. I, I find uh, this, this, this struggle, this battle that's going on. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Jesus. The Christ. Just stop by to tell you that it's going to get better, but you got to hang in there. You got to get on your knees. You got to pray. You got to seek the Lord. You got to get in his face. You got to get in your word. And it may not be fair, but it's sovereign and it's right and it's God. And quit being a wimp. Quit being a quit being a a super spiritual Christian wimp and go through it. I can't even begin to tell you the things that I have went through and that I'm going through. And I wish I could throw in the towel today. But I'm here today and I've had you on my mind. And I've got the body of Christ on my mind. I've got those souls that are lost on my mind. And I want to see people saved, delivered, set free from bondage. Be blessed with this word today. Let it challenge you. Get in God's face. Get in his word. And let him minister to you. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you and Godspeed. Until we see each other again. Be blessed.